The fear of being let down is a core aspect of human nature, but in the games industry, it's begun to run wild. I keep seeing this sentiment about upcoming projects, this fear of the scam game. And while that fear isn't entirely baseless, it's also often directed in a shotgun pattern all over the place affecting projects that do deserve it, and more often, those that don't. Being able to see straight through the smoke and mirrors, being able to not be disappointed, is actually a skill. Because the real problem with the fear of scam games isn't the games themselves. It has to do with marketing and our blindness to how it manipulates us. Well, to put it plainly, I was sick of that. And just because I've been disappointed repeatedly doesn't mean that you need to be ever again. And I'm gonna talk about how. Okay, clear. Please proceed. I used to love those E3 demos, those raw gameplay reveals where the player would cinematically walk around, looking at all the pretty graphics, perfectly interacting with the environment. It was just so exciting to see a new game in this context, this most perfect experience of it, almost like watching a movie. Let's take a look around. All right. Over the years, though, I think that the gaming world has become less and less trusting of this kind of trailer. We've seen too many times that what we see in a gameplay reveal, so-called, and what we actually get our hands on, can be night and day. One of the greatest and most dastardly tools that marketing uses ties into the very reason that we are so often disappointed when games don't hit their mark, the trick of the vertical slice. While not unique to games marketing, it's also not an inherently bad or evil idea. Put simply, it's a demo that shows many of a game's core mechanics in a controlled single game level or mission, a vertical slice of a larger pie. The issue is when there is no larger pie, when that vertical slice is developed on its own. Cyberpunk 2077's use of this tactic is widely reported and ties into its disastrous release, actually. Vital development time, budget, and manpower went into developing a pristine curated demo entirely separate from the core game. The marketing told us that not only were we watching footage of the game we'd buy, but that the whole game showed this level of complexity, this level of polish. The city streets are bustling with crowds of people from all facets of life all living their lives within a full day and night cycle. But as we all know, while Cyberpunk was wrought with every controversy from poor working conditions to rightful accusations of misleading marketing, it can't rightly be called a scam. It's a buzzword thrown around chaotically at this point, but let's take a step back here and really think critically. What is a scam game? Oftentimes I think when people say this, they mean it's a bad game, maybe unfinished, or maybe just a game they thought they'd like but didn't. In my eyes though, a scam game can be simply defined. A game developed under the sole pretense of making as much money as possible with no intention of ever being completed, improved upon, or being an actual game at all. Truthfully, it's virtually impossible to identify a true scam game by just watching a trailer. That takes real investigative journalism. What we can do is change the way that we view marketing by following a simple four-step process. So let me take you through it. Step one, objective elements. What do we really see? This is how you begin to break the veil. Marketing always tells us there's more here we aren't showing you. It's one of the most clever tricks in the book. Like a magician with a magic wave of the hand, it's taking your eyes off reality and putting your head in the clouds where the ultimate perfect game of your dreams exists. The trailer only has to set the match. Your imagination will take you the rest of the way. So that's the first step, break free of your imagination. What do we really see? What is the core game in the gameplay trailer? But identifying the game isn't always straightforward because what if the gameplay itself is fake? Well, let's talk about that. And in order to do so, I wanna use the work of a game developer named Crimson. The supposed zombie survival MMO the day before really kicked off the whole scam game freakout in the indie shooter game community. You're probably real sick of hearing about it. But I often said in the years leading up to its release that I saw straight through the BS on this one. It's collectively agreed upon that the trailers for the day before which garnered so much attention online were straight up fake, like not even footage of what most would consider a game. Crimson demonstrates how this was done by doing it himself, creating a fake trailer for a game that doesn't exist and for which he has no intention of making. 
This gameplay is essentially a film set created in a game engine. He explains that animations which are polished and sleek are actually incomplete trash when viewed from the wrong client. Certain sounds and visual effects only play from one specific character's perspective. The thing that Crimson shows us with this video is that when something in a gameplay trailer seems extremely cinematic, it very well might be literally cinematic, as in faked for the specifically oriented eyes of a camera. There's no game here, just simple movie magic. This is all to say that when I originally watched these Day Before trailers, I was looking for objective evidence of real gameplay, and I came up empty-handed. Once we've identified those objective elements, then come the next three steps. Could it happen? Does it matter? And finally, could it be a scam? Let me explain in detail. Those elements that we don't see, the implied ones, a game's complexity, depth, breadth, that vision we're assuming is there, but aren't objectively shown. Could it be there? Is that viable? And I'm speaking objective, evidence-based stuff, the hardware the game supposedly runs on, the team behind the game, the state of other games, like it in the industry. Is what's being promised possible? Ask yourself, if things aren't as they seem, if the game doesn't have the breadth or the complexity promised, again, would it matter? If the answer is no, then continue on to the final step. Could this game be a scam? This is all a bit conceptual, so if you're getting a bit lost, let's back up and use hard, objective examples from my own personal experience. Firstly, the day before. As I've said previously, I knew that this game was a scam from the second that it was announced, and here's how with my steps. Objective elements, what do we see? Basically, these trailers show extremely bare-bones gameplay punctuated by explosive cinematic moments that appear far too perfect to be real. Essentially, nothing about these trailers is trustworthy or objective. The only legitimate elements that come across as potentially real are some super janky shooting and looting mechanics. So then, next step, does it matter? The game was marketed as an open-world survival MMO where players would compete with others for supplies, cars, and uncovered their story of the apocalypse. The trailers implied elements like zombie hordes, explorable bunkers, and complex player interactions, without giving strong evidence that any of these mechanics were actually present in a full and final game. The world of the day before is teeming with hungry hordes of bloodthirsty infected ready to tear you to pieces. These elements could appear in this curated trailer context, but what evidence do we have of how they would appear naturally in real gameplay? If these elements weren't there, would it matter? The answer, absolutely. There was zero objective evidence that any of the implied or suggested breadth of the game existed, and if it didn't, there was no game. So then the final step, could this be a scam? Aggressive, high-budget marketing, shifty, quiet developers with essentially zero track record who delete their trailers, all of which show little evidence of being real gameplay, leading up to a highly marketed Steam Early Access release, the potential that this was essentially a pyramid scheme was high. And to be honest, I'm still surprised that so many people bought into it. So let's look at an example where I came to a different conclusion, and I'm going to take you through my step-by-step -step mental process here. Grey Zone Warfare, bet you're pretty tired of hearing me talk about that, released their announcement trailer in November of 2023. Objective elements. We saw various weapons on display, some combat with AI from a distance, what appeared to be one small area, characters riding around on a helicopter, and that's about it. Okay, so the gameplay itself that we see in these trailers doesn't show much. To be honest, when I first saw it, it looked cool, but I got no impression of an actual game behind the visuals. Then we learned a bit more about the background, that it was based on Roadside Picnic, that it was an open world PvEVP game, 42 square kilometer map, over 100 quests, etc. So now I'm intrigued, but skeptical. So again, objective elements, what we see in the trailer, you fly on a helicopter, you shoot AI. If that's all the game is, does it matter? Yes, the game claims to be much more than what it shows objectively, and its breadth is a key selling point. So next step, is it possible? Hearing claims from the developers about their use of Unreal Engine 5 and newly developed technologies, maybe there's no way to know until we actually see it. So then, the next step, could it be a scam? Here's where the research comes in. Who are these people? After running through all these questions in my head, it was the first thing that I did. I dug. 
The company appeared to be a mobile game developer who had developed several titles I'd personally played and loved. Was their track record perfect? Of course not whose is, but they had one. They had shipped and supported multiple titles for over a decade and were beloved by fans and critics alike. Several developers on the team had experience shipping well-renowned AAA PC titles, and some seemed to have worked at developing PC games in Grey Zone's own milsim genre niche. The developers were established workers in the industry with accolades, decades of experience, and multiple shipped titles. If the game was a scam, a shell of a title marketed solely to sell copies and then run, what would these devs have to gain? Money. What would they have to lose? Everything. Could this game be a scam? My conclusion was almost certainly 100% no. The thing is, the diligence with which I researched this title, the skepticism I showed it at first, came from my platform. I wanted to know if it was something worth telling other people about. And from my conclusions, I kept following it, kept looking into it, and of course now I've actually played it, and albeit a very unfinished state. If you want to hear my thoughts on that, check out the pinned video. But that degree of skepticism shouldn't need to be required, because for most people, to be honest, a game shouldn't matter that much. It's no secret that in an interconnected online world, finding moments of solace and dependability, finding a place where we can feel at home, steadfast in our trust of something, that's not easy these days. The more we feel this, the stronger our urges for escapism. The more that we rely on our media for that escapism. It's almost as if we expect our media to get huger and huger, to provide more and more for us every time. And the further we place our expectations upon it, to provide for us in a most perfect way. Placing these monumental expectations, in the best cases, it sets us up to feel let down, and in the worst cases, it creates situations for us to be directly taken advantage of. That perfect game we imagine in our heads, we think it should be so easy, but guess what? It isn't, or someone would have done it. The brilliance of Crimson's Day Before parody is that he proved how hard, how complex, and how time-consuming game development is if you were to actually create the game people wanted the day before to be. Game dev is not magic. Developers cannot snap their fingers and make a perfect game in the way that movie magic can fake the impression of one. The real magic of games isn't the facade, the impression, it's the ability to reach through and touch the world on the other side. The closest thing to the magic of games is the passion of the people behind them. I don't advocate for blind skepticism. I advocate for educated, intentional consumerism. The thing is, when you believe everything in front of your eyes, it's very easy to have the wool pulled over them. I truly think that being uneducated on game mechanics not only lets people be easily misled, but causes rash, rampant distrust of literally anything that seems remotely interesting or ambitious. Being able to identify misleading marketing practices can help you, hopefully, be less frustrated when something doesn't turn out as it seems, and almost more importantly, actually correctly identify those projects that are promising, that are what they seem. Games are art, I do truly believe, and there's an incredible amount of hard work and talent that goes into them. The best ones do have a bit of magic to them, the kind that transports you somewhere, the kind you can reach out and touch. It is out there. You just need to know where to find it. Thanks for watching. I wouldn't feel okay making this video without giving massive credit to the reason I even decided to make it in the first place, Crimson, the one who made this whole video. Please, like, literally right now, go check out his work, including Suit for Hire, the game he's currently working on, but he's likely going to be doing many other interesting things in the future. I think that as gamers, interacting with the people who understand and create the stuff that we love is super important, and small indie game developers need way more support and appreciation than they get. So seriously, go check out not only his videos that I referenced in this one, but whatever it is that he is currently working on. If you did make it this far into the video, thank you first of all, and do let me know by leaving a like for the algorithm, and secondly by leaving a comment with the word nice like before. Please subscribe if you want to hear me yap about something else, and until next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers.